Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 23rd. If you guys are liking these videos, make sure to click subscribe, like, and turn on your notifications. I'm also going to leave a link below for Pacific Northwest Weather Watch items such as shirts, hats, hoodies. And if you guys like to see any other items in there, let me know and I'll put them in the shop. So today we're going to look at the extended in great detail. We're also going to take a look at, of course, what's coming up in the next few days across Pacific Northwest. We'll take a little bit of a look across the rest of the country also. So let's just dive right into it here. You can see the big upper level ridge still going on across Pacific Northwest. We've got our old tropical system down here that's kind of been invigorated by some upper level cold air that's now producing lightning. It's more of a Kona storm, an extra-tropical system now, much more of a danger to ships and boats out there than it ever was when the Hurricane Center was considering it putting as a tropical system. So if we zoom in here, look at this fog just entrenched over the Puget Sound, Willamette Valley, eastern Washington, and you can see the snow at the higher elevations, glorious sunshine on any of the hikes there through the Cascades. So if you drive east out of Seattle or Portland or out of the Willamette Valley into the coastal range or on the coast, you're going to be in some glorious sunshine, so get out and enjoy it. So here we'll take one more look at that old tropical disturbance there. It was pretty much dead in the water. Then this upper level uh, cold air kind of merged with it. Now it's producing quite a bit of lightning. It's more of a Kona storm now, an extra tropical system. So kind of an interesting feature there. So moving right into the rest of the country here, there's a freeze warning down there, actually a frost warning in Florida. We've got winter weather advisories through some of the areas up there towards the Great Lakes and the heavy freeze spray warning actually up there in the Great Lakes. And we've got, of course, our dense fog and air stagnation advisories across Pacific Northwest. Still some remaining wind advisories for the Southern California area here. All the way down into Florida. Check it out. They probably got the heavy coats out there. Frost advisory here's what's going on across the country coming up they've been talking about a potential for a big nor'easter forming up the east coast and it looks like the latest model runs have kind of taken that away a bit here you can see as we put this into motion here comes the storm developing here see the gfs has it developing closer to the shoreline here the european just brings this offshore quite rapidly the gfs is spinning it up closer to shore but previous runs had this much closer to the east coast and bringing heavy snow all the way across up towards new york and the gfs still brings some heavy snow up, you know carolina virginia area but it doesn't really bring it up the coastline much and the european says you know brief snow and then forget about it so looking back the pacific northwest here check out some of the temperatures going on to this afternoon if you notice there look at the higher terrain outside of the puget sound willamette valley very warm this is getting up towards, you know, 60 degrees. And check out the southern Oregon coast there. Some of the areas on the Washington coast are going to be very nice today. And eastern Washington socked in. You can see freezing fog going on. So a nice day for some areas the Pacific Northwest today. And we'll see how much Willamette Valley and Puget Sound break out. Checking out the local wind speeds here. You can see how they remain generally offshore and very light through the valley areas. So there's just not that much mixing to clear it out. Taking a closer look at southwest Oregon here, you can see the dense fog advisories, air stagnation advisories, of course. I wanted to mention the beach hazard statement here, too. So we've got the potential for sneaker waves, and the weather is very warm down there, especially along the coastline. And, you know, the water is very cold. There's big logs and a lot of debris in the ocean there, too. So heads up there with the sneaker waves in southern Oregon. And as we take a look back up towards Puget Sound, of course, we got air stagnation, dense fog, nothing new there. Same thing with the Willamette Valley. Again, if you get up in the terrain, it's going to be kind of nice, though. You know, drive out east on I-90 and check it out. So here we go. Let's get into the extended here. So comparing the European on the left versus the GFS on the right as to what's coming. You can see the huge ridge on us now. And there's going to be good agreement, as per usual, in the early stages of these model runs. You can see the system developing off the Pacific here, trying to break down that ridge. The GFS says, no, nope, I don't think that's going to happen. The European says, oh, I'll bring a weak system in here, and we're going to break down this our dry spell here in January. So there's where the first disagreements are, but you can see there is agreement in this ridge building out here. And that's what we're looking to see if that's gonna drive some Arctic air into our region later on into early February. So as we bring this into motion here, you'll notice how the GFS and the European have different shaped ridges here. This is kind of pinching off the Arctic air possibilities into Western Washington and Oregon there. And this leaves the door open a bit more here on the on the GFS. Arctic air, and this is so far out that either one of these models could be right now. But this ridge extending this far north and east is generally not a great pattern for Arctic air to get to our region. So that's something we'll be watching over the next few days here. 
here is the Canadian versus the GFS. This is now, and again, good wallet agreement uh, initially with the Ridge. But you can see that both the Canadian and the GFS kind of kill that system before it even gets to the Pacific Northwest and keeps us dry until probably the 30th here. And then it brings that first system through. And, and then you'll see the next polar lobe kind of being shunted to the east here in a lot of the, the GFS ensembles here. And then you've got this lobe here with a more zonal flow south of that. So the Arctic air is definitely not a sure thing coming up here. It's still fantasy land, folks. And checking out the GFS versus the European here, 5,000 foot temperatures. This gives us a good idea where the Arctic air may or may not set up. Putting this into the future here, you can see the Arctic air starting to build there in North BC on the Euro and up Northwest Territories in the Yukon and the GFS there. And you'll notice the European pushes that quickly down and mostly east of the Rockies here. It will bring a pattern change and we're going to be in a, a cooler pattern here in the Pacific Northwest. But you can see the GFS is much more bullish with the Arctic air getting into the region. So it's it's a toss-up right now whether this arctic air is going to get in here or you know just how much of it will and here we're looking at the polar vortex here let's let's back this up a bit so this is currently you can see it's situated over the north pole where it's supposed to be and as we go into the future here this is the gfs on the left and european on the right pretty good agreement here and then the gfs or the european cuts off at 240 hours so now we'll just go back to the gfs and watch that one into the extended and then eventually it breaks it down and starts putting this polar vortex, reaching it out into Western North America here a bit. So that's what we're looking at. It's still fantasy. You can see how far out this is. So it's just entertainment purposes for now, but the pattern change is coming. We just don't know if it's going to be an Arctic air intrusion or just more of a general stormy pattern for the Pacific Northwest. And here's looking at the same pattern from the North Pole, GFS versus the run before. And just look at how much of these these runs are, are differing you can see the one this morning uh, the ridge uh, shape is so much different even at 200 hours so you can see the difficulty in making these forecasts and then look at last night's the ridge was much more you know had a much more cross polar flow here and much more generous arctic air coming into the region versus pinching off this and building the ridge further north and east on this morning's run so i expect this is probably going to flip flop back and forth as it has been and then you can see just this last night had this, this monster ridge and allowing this Arctic air to come into our region. And now it pinches it off more and keeps the main polar lobe out of our region on this morning. And then it tries again later in the period, as you can see here. But yeah, we've got a long way to go. And this you can see we've got you can see just how much each run varies. So we're just kind of painting the possibility. The pattern change looks like it's coming just what kind of pattern change will that be here's some of the ensembles here's seattle you can see a lot of these are warm and a few of these do have arctic air intrusions and some potential snowfall for the region some of these are pretty chilly but they're definitely in the minority right now here's vancouver showing basically the same thing the warmth and some of these runs get a little bit chillier but we're still we're still so far out but you can see the chaos as we go into the future here this is spokane for example so you can see the warmer solutions versus the colder solutions. But you can see the pattern change coming here around the 1st of February. So that's one thing the models are in agreement about. And here's Seattle snowfall. You can see there's a smattering of significant snowfalls in here and one big one. But as you can see, it's just very chaotic once you get this far out in the model run. So it's just fantasy right now. It's still, it's still just something to watch. So I just wanted to finish up by showing the control run on the European here for this morning. I wanted to point out that these models are really good tools. In the case of February 2019, February 2021, and this last December big Arctic intrusion, we saw these things coming in upwards of two weeks out. The models were hinting at these. And then we kind of watched these models and we watched the trends and we watched to see where the agreement comes and when it comes. And then we can really pinpoint these systems well in advance. So the trend is your friend you know each individual run itself doesn't mean much but when you're looking at these over the period of a few days and matching those with ensemble runs and checking models for consistency they can be highly effective in forecasting weather in advance so let's go ahead and put this into motion here and there's the big ridge of course it's giving us our air stagnation issues now 
And the European model is pretty bullish on bringing a system through the 28th and ending our dry streak then next Friday night. And then you can see that ridge just kind of pinches off this area of cold air as it gets out over us. Not really great for Arctic air intrusion in Pacific Northwest. This would be a cold system, would be great mountain snow, but probably not a huge lowland snowmaker. There could be an exception if that surface low sets up just in the right area and we've got an Arctic high somewhat over British Columbia and you get the right deformation band on the north side of that low, you could get a nice snowy system out of this setup. But you can see this ridge is pretty far north and east and that pinches off uh, potential for cross polar flow and a, and a reinforcement of Arctic air into the region. And check this out, this would be a good California storm here off into the future. And then you can see it relaxes a bit and allows another polar lobe to move through the area here even later into the system. This is getting towards February 6th, way out in La La Land. But we do have multiple chances at getting some colder air in here. The pattern is likely to change early February and we'll get out of the stagnant fog situation, hopefully. And all signs are pointing to that. So hopefully you guys are liking this channel. Let me know what you guys think and feedback in the comments and I'll do my best to make changes and keep this interesting. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Check back on Twitter for updates.